Okay, so we're going to look at how we can find the 95% confidence interval for binomial distributions. And we're going to explain what that means a bit later on. But first, I want to just show you the three things that we need to know. Okay, firstly is the sample proportion, which is basically uh, the, the, the samples, uh, the number of successes divided by the sample size. Okay, so let's say like over here, I've done this calculation on the calculator. Let's say that... Um, 12, 12 people out of 22 um, liked, had brown hair, okay? So you could say a proportion of 0 0.545, okay? If P is a sample proportion then, for sufficiently large N, the distribution of proportions is approximately normal with mean MP equals P, okay? So this is similar to the central limit theorem in normal distributions, and what that's saying is, as n gets larger, the mean gets more accurate. And so this sample proportion approximates the, the proportion of the whole, uh, the, the whole distribution, okay? Um, so we can calculate the standard deviation or what's known as the standard error in this circumstance as it being a square root of p, where p is this value up here, times by one take p, okay? which is basically the probability of a failure and that divided by the number of trials, okay? So at the moment, it's just formula, okay? And just crunching numbers in the formula. And once again, our 95% confidence interval for P is pretty much exactly the same as the um, one for normal distribution. We've got here P, take 1.96 times by, the, by the sigma, or the square root of P times one take P on N. Okay, now what this is a measure of, okay, it's saying we are 95% confident that the mean sample proportion, okay, that the sample proportion lies between here and here, okay, and obviously the larger n gets, the smaller the variation, and so we become more and more confident. So let's put this in with an example, okay. A random sample of 200 South Australians showed that 76 supported the Adelaide Crows. Find the sample proportion, okay? If you can recall, P equals X on N, all right, showing up the top here. So all we need to do is put, let's write that out. Okay, so we have A. P equals X on N. Okay, now X is the number of successes, which equals 76 on 200. All right, let's calculate that one. Uh, we've got 76 divided by 200. Okay, and our answer is 0 0.38. Okay, so our P with a hat equals 0 0.38. Our sample proportion is 0 0.38. 0 0.38 of people in South Australia, or this sample of 200 people, support the crows. Okay, the standard error is equal to the square root of P times Q on N, where, if you remember, Q equals 1 take P. Okay. This is exactly what we had up here that my mouse is circling now, okay? P times one take P or P times Q on N, whichever you prefer. All right, so we have P equals 0 0.38, which means Q equals one take 0 0.38, which equals 0 0.62, okay? So let's perform this operation. We have the square root of 0 0.38 times 0 0.62, and that's divided by the number of trials, which is 200, okay? So this is our standard error. Okay, so let's calculate that. We have the square root of Now, I'm going to put a few brackets in here, 0 0.38 times 
times 0.62 we're going there, 0.38 times 0.62, and we're dividing that by the sample size, which is 200. Okay, let's calculate that. So our standard deviation or standard error is 0 0.034. So this is the tough part, find the 95% confidence interval, okay? So this is equal to P, as we've got here, P, take 1.96 times the square root of the standard error, which we've already calculated, okay? So there we're subtracting it, here we're adding it, all right? So what we're going to do for that one then is like this we're going to have uh, P, which is 0 0.38, take away 1.96 times sigma. Sigma is that there, okay? I'm not going to calculate it every time. Sometimes you won't be asked to calculate the standard error. You'll just be asked to calculate the um, confidence interval straight away. Okay, so here, because we've already calculated it, we can just plot that put that figure straight in there, okay? But what it would look like is you chop that part there and put it down there, okay? Uh, so that's times 0 0.0343, okay? Is less than or equal to the sample proportion, which is less than or equal to 0 0.38 plus 1.96 times sigma, okay, where sigma is... 0 0.0343, okay? So a few brackets there. All right. So let's find out our confidence interval. So we have 0 0.38 take, uh, 1.96 times 0 0.0343. Okay, which is 0 0.312, 0 0.313, if we round it, which we should. Okay, and that's less than the population um, proportion, which is less than or equal to uh, point. Uh, let's, let's just go up here. Let's be smart about it. And I'll just press the up arrow here and we'll change that to a plus. So we have to write all that again. Okay, so we're just performing that operation over here, uh, which is less than point, 0 0.447. Okay, so what this means then, okay, is that we are 95% confident, all right? This part D says interview and your answer. Okay, 95% confidence interval. You start by saying we are 95% confident that the population proportion, okay, which means if you sampled every single person in Australia, in South Australia is the population we're talking about, every single person in South Australia, you would find that between 0 0.313 and 0 0.447 of the population uh, follows the crows, okay? So we're 95% confident that out of every single person in South Australia, either 31.3% of people or 44 point, between 31.3 and 44.7% of people follow the crows, okay? So you're going to need to know this information, all right? And you won't always be asked to calculate this separately. Sometimes they'll just throw it in and say calculate the 95% confidence interval, okay? And I'll go through a few more examples with you about how to do that, but it should be pretty straightforward because it's quite similar to what we've done previously.